Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Marriage Boot Camp Family Edition Reality Stars Season Something Episode 2. Makeup lipstick for today. This is Urban Decay, as usual. The color is Love Drunk. I like it. It is like a wine-ish color, but also a red-ish color. And it is what it is. You can get it from Sephora. Um, so, Marriage Bootcamp Reality Stars Family Edition. Long-ass title. This season. Um, <laughs> I don't care much about the Graziano sisters. I don't care much even about Glanville. I feel like Brandy Glanville is there because she just likes reality TV. I honestly believe that. And even though I don't much care for the Graziano sisters because I feel like they're just sisters having petty sister issues as we all have um, sometimes with our siblings, I still believe their issues are more real than Brandy's. So it's hard for me to even pay attention to the bullshit and the fuckery of the storyline with those two people um the episode picks up with amber in a little tantrum i don't want to be here yeah it's how she acts i want to go home yeah me and my nephew make that noise because that noise, oh, oh, uh, my nephew's 12 and amber's acting like a fucking 12 year old and you're triggering an addict i can't believe you would do that da, da, da. i'm leaving yeah and she put her purse down. First of all, a grown adult who leaving, don't put their purse down. We don't. Your purse is on your shoulder, on your hip, in your hand, and you're leaving. When you're leaving somewhere, you don't leave, you don't leave your purse in the room. You wanted attention. You're a fucking child. You know, doctor, whichever one comes in there, uh, the female doctor. I can never remember which one is Dr. V and which one is Dr. Ish. Even when I see their names, I can't retain <laughs> which is which. It's so weird. Um, but female doctor he's the doctor he's doctor B, comes in like okay what's wrong what's what's the issue where's what you got why would you trick an addict and have pills and she's like they're not real but that can still trick us by seeing it and they're like we did it to get a reaction do you realize what kind of room you're in and she's looking around and she's like you're in a room that's a baby's room because you act like children and then Amber shut the fuck up. And she thought about it. She's like, I did just have a whole fucking tantrum. She says, you all act like children. You, Matt, and your mom act like 17-year-old kids. And that's why you're in a baby's room. And you're going to sleep in, in, in cribs. I'm like, bitch. Really? But it's true. It's the absolute. Amber acts like an immature, angry high schooler. And she really thinks she's big, bag, and bold. And she don't realize she ain't. And she don't realize her behavior don't really work in the real world. It does not. Amber would have probably by now, and this is so sad to say, gotten beaten up like 18 times. By like a female. Not like, a, not, not, not like abused by a guy. But I mean like in the real world, if you working with someone, you cussing and fussing at me, I'm going to beat your ass. When, like we, it's, If you call, bitch, bitch, what? And you're in my face. It's going to be some furniture moving. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's going to be some furniture being moved because that behavior is not tolerated. And I can't be at work arguing with my coworker about what you say about me, bitch. You can't do that in the real world. And Amber does not realize that yet because she's on reality TV. And um, then she thinks her reactions was fine. Well, they triggered me. So, you know, that, my reaction was fine. No, it wasn't. And it shows that you're the true goddamn child. But it is what it is. So, it's the next day. And I can't focus on anything except Jim Jones sitting in the kitchen rolling a blunt. Bitch, I'm like, I don't think any show on Wee TV. Well, no, because they had... We TV is very liberal when it comes to we. Cause they be showing Bow Wow and I'm smoking on um growing up hip hop. So I guess so. But I'm like, it was just weird seeing Jim Jones sitting in the kitchen the kitchen table, 
rolling the blunt. And I'm like, don't they realize Jim Jones going to be high this whole season? Every day he's there, he going to be real, real high. So they have a whole group exercise where each person gets to go into a soundproof booth. And they can say the things that they've never said out loud to the people they're there with to get it off their chest. And they say, it's a soundproof booth. No one will hear what you said, you know. So just go in there and just bear your soul. And as they're saying that, I'm like, don't say shit. They're going to repeat it later. You know what I'm saying? If you watch marriage boot camp, the regular thing or the family, whatever, whenever they tell you to write, to say, to express yourself, this is a safe environment. We won't repeat it. It's a secret between you and the piece of paper or it's a secret between you and this in the soundproof box. Don't be stupid. Don't you seen every season. No one can tell me I've watched I've been on marriage boot camp in the edition and I ain't watched not one episode beforehand. They always have it. They always do it where someone <sighs> just spills their guts and gets surprised. I didn't know you was gonna say something, but you on the goddamn reality show. But you know, everyone goes in the box. You're gonna pay for it later. So Brandy goes in the box, says her father grew up growing weeds so and she thinks he was a drug dealer. I mean, he was either a drug dealer or just a goddamn pot smoker. Anywhere go, what, what? That's your issue with your daddy? No. Her daddy going, and he said that she thinks, he say, I think she's living a life of, of sex, drugs, and rock and roll, and she acts like it's the reality, and that's not really what it is. He don't get what a reality show is, so he thinks the doctor's out here hoeing in these streets. You know, we see Matt going there, and he said how Amber needs to control her anger. Amber mom goes in saying Matt is a liar. Amber then goes in that her mom fucked up $45,000 when she was in prison. I'm like, what is going on? You know, which her mom looks like she's not good with money. So my thing is, why would you trust your mama with your money? I feel like if you in jail and you have that much money, get you an attorney who handles your, who handles your shit. You don't trust your mama if that's kind of how your mama is. Everyone knows what their parents' strong suits and weak suits are. Like my mom, she doesn't have any weak suits. My mom is great. She's fucking amazing. I feel like Amber's mom, not so much. So why trust her with your money when she don't even seem reliable enough to like drive you to like the grocery store to pick up like some Kroger points? Um, Jim, Jim getting booth, Jim high, okay? Jim getting booth and he like, you know, I don't got nothing negative to say about him. So, yeah, he wasn't in there but two seconds and came out. Jim is just not, <laughs> he high. He's high and it's just hilarious. You know, Mama Jones go in and say how she just don't like Chrissy Ways. Honey, Chrissy going to goddamn on thing. She crying in there. You know, she's saying how, you know, she's never fought so hard for someone in her life. And it's just so hard for her to consistently have to fight them to prove her worth and how she feels like they are better off since she came into the picture. And Chrissy crying and Dr. V and Dr. Ish looking at Jim like, Jim, you don't see her crying? Like, you, you think she's okay? Like, what you think she ain't talking about? He like, oh, she crying. She she okay. She she probably has some stuff to say. I'm like, but how do you not have, I, I don't have not nan ex who would ever, who, who has ever seen me cry in the past or would see me cry in the present or the future and not have some kind of reaction to completely come and save me from my tears. So the fact that he, I don't know if he was just too high to realize that she was really crying, but the fact that he did not even go try to console her, to even stand in the booth, to give her any kind of like, to even look her way and say, you okay? Are you okay? You know? Yes, you okay? Like nothing. He just, he just high. So, you know, she come out saying, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay. I just had to say some things and, um, he hugged her a little bit or whatever. It's just, you know, it's, um, you know, but they've been together for like 12 years and they ain't married yet. So it's like, what do you expect? You know, the, um, Graziano sisters go in and again, I feel like their issues are petty and tedious little sister stuff. Like, oh, I think that one's a, I think my one sister lies. I think my one sister's drug addiction is it's regular schmegala shit. I don't think it's any underlying issue to it. I don't think there's any weird. I think they know exactly why they don't like each other. And they old and they in their ways. And I'm like, y'all in y'all 50, 50s and y'all 60s. Like, why y'all? I just, I don't get it. I feel like when you love your sibling, but you know your sibling has certain ways about them that you don't fuck with. 
is cool because you still love your sibling. I don't think they don't like or love each other. I think they have regular sibling issues. And someone said, hey, Renee, you want to go back on Luke Campbell? Your sister, your sister to fix it? You know what? Why not? And I don't, I just don't, I don't care. So we then see after they go in their booth, I didn't even listen to what they said, honestly. I, I mean, I listened, but it was petty little shit. Um, two of the sisters are arguing. Renee and one of the sisters who I swear look just like her with the dark hair is arguing back and forth. And then they say, well, yeah, because when, when the one sister was about to go to jail and she used Renee as a scapegoat saying that Renee was mentally, uh, <laughs> she was mentally unstable. So Renee would not have been able to take care of the sister's kids, I guess, in that way, keeping the sister out of jail. And my thing is, if my sister had to tell somebody that I'm crazy so that she ain't got to go to jail, I don't care. As long as that don't mean I have to go to jail, <laughs> I don't care. Bitch said I'm crazy and I'm a killer. I don't, whatever. As long as it's not affecting me, like in real life, I don't care. They think I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm crazy. Whatever. I'm like, she was... I, I was confused. I'm like, did she say that? And in turn, did that get Renee arrested? Like, did she say that? And then they made Renee go to like a mental institution? Like, what happened? They didn't elaborate. If she just said it and it was just said, I mean, let's be honest. Renee do have, is at times mentally unstable. Renee do, did, and does have and had a drug issue. So my thing is, I don't think the sister said anything that wasn't true. So my thing is, Renee, if it didn't get you sent to jail, why are you still mad about it now? You supposed to want to help your sister get out of stuff. So if if she had to tell a little white lie or a little green truth, because let's be it's true, what did you mad for all this time later? Girl, bye. Yeah, who cares? So, and I feel like the one sister, is she so worked up, they're arguing and yelling. And, you know, when they separate them, the one sister say, you know, I just want peace. I just want peace. And I, this is how I feel. And I feel, like, I feel like this. I have always felt like this. Sometimes in life with friends and with family, you have to separate the two. Sometimes in life, you have to love your family from afar. Meaning you don't have to consistently have your toxic family and friends in your life simply because we're well, their family. No, you can't. No, you can't do that. Like there are people who I have family members who I don't deal with. Simply because I don't need the crazy foolishness in my everyday life. I don't love them any less. If we have like family reunions, family family gatherings, I will go to family gathering. But like we not gonna just be hanging out on the, on a daily basis, and I'm consistently having them in my life because then their issues become my issues, and we end up on goddamn marriage boot camp at at sixty. Ain't gonna happen. So I feel like they are sisters who do love each other and they trying to be too much in each other's lives when they don't really mesh now. Sometimes to have peace, you have to love people from afar. And until some people get that, they will consistently have chaos in their lives. I love my stress-free life. I love all my family at the same time, but I'm not gonna let your issues be my issues and I'm down show ain't gonna be arguing with you every goddamn time we see each other. Ain't gonna happen, boo boo. And I don't think the Graciano sisters know that. They need to figure it out. Um it's a little scene of Chrissy and Brandy like sitting outside chit chatting and Chrissy saying how, you know, I just don't want this us being here like to ruin me and him you know I don't want it to like take a toll on our relationship she admits that they have taken breaks before um and she's like and we was on she said when I, we was on breaks I like I didn't date anyone but you know we, we were still on a break and then Brandon said well did he date anyone and she's like you know I don't know you know she's like I hope not but you know I don't you know I don't know honestly Brandy then says you know we're not getting any younger maybe it's just not meant to be bitch First of all, Christy, you talking to the wrong person. Look, I would not look. <sighs> Brandy Glanville is the last person who I would take advice from simply because I feel like she does not have her, all her mental stuff together. I feel like she is still consistently stuck in the mindset of my ex-husband cheated on me. So I have to consistently use that as an excuse as a way I as to why I'm a basket case sometimes and I feel like when someone fucks you over yes it does affect you yes it takes you to, I've had I've had I'm gonna have a story time later after I do this it's gonna be story time um I've had stuff done to me that was crazy and yes it does affect you but you can't keep that 
in your life as a reason to like be fucked up and crazy or whatever and oh i'm so emotional he left me yeah i don't believe that so you know he's hearing brandy say maybe it isn't meant to be i feel like if they've been together for 12 years they've been engaged for like seven they could be meant to be together maybe not married i look at things like oprah and statman oprah and statman have a real stable relationship and they're not married um, but I feel like both parties have to agree. I want to be with you forever, but I don't want to be married to you, but I want us to be in a committed, monogamous, loving, engaging, life sharing relationship. And for Jimmy and Chris, I feel like Chrissy wants to get married. Chrissy has always wanted to be married. And for some reason they not married. I don't know why not. I don't understand why not, but I feel like if y'all have been together this long and he hasn't married you and you are okay with that, then you then no one should be pressing the issue because obviously you're happy. So, I, but I'm like for Brandy to tell Chrissy, maybe it's not meant to be. We're not getting any younger. No, bitch, you not getting any younger. <laughs> maybe it ain't meant for you to be with who you want to be with. Don't judge my relationship. Hush, puppy. So I'm like, girl, don't listen to her. So we then see like the doctor is like watching Jim who's like sleep high on the couch in the back and they think that he's like not listening, not participating. And I'm like, no, he's just high. He's high. you have he need to be on goddamn on celebrity rehab because he's high every day. He smokes weed every day. So I think it's a thing of he's just consistently in chill more because he's high. He not in his right, you know. Anyway. Amber and Matt. So Amber and Matt like on the back porch patio area talking and then she just says like you know what you've been really distant recently and I don't know why and then he goes into like why are you attacking me I'm confused how it went from point a to point b between them two but I I stopped trying to figure them out honestly I have you know she goes on to say well I'm <laughs> because you're nuts and I feel like Amber is 100% insane i feel like she is completely mentally insane and we know this to be true because she is literally on mental medications we know that she has like bipolar so she really does have mental issues so when she has these outbursts i'm like why isn't this girl in like mental boot camp like some kind of let me get my mental and physical together i should even be here trying to figure out some shit with a man i feel like she needs mental help to get herself stable in her mind and you know he was saying how you know she's one she's absolutely crazy and two she will absolutely positively take any chance that she has to argue with someone i completely agree i feel like amber <sighs> sometimes amber plays the victim to have an argument because she'll play the victim to where someone has to say that, that that's not true and then it's an argument and then she's like bitch you don't know me you don't know me bitch you know and it's a whole thing and i feel like she's too old to be doing that shit now nah, it's just stupid she goes from it goes from that now she's up in his face and she says i'm crazy you're a woman beating piece of shit you know that's why i'm angry because you put your hands on me i'm like where the fuck that come from? Like, where did that come from? All this time that Amber and Matt was on Team Mom, all this time they had been together, I don't recall her accusing him of being abusive. I always expected that it was drug issues and, like, maybe he was messing around on her. I didn't get abuse issues. So it was weird for me that she's saying... You're a woman beating piece of shit, which means one, you're not scared of him because if you were scared of him, you would not be in his face. Two, I feel like Amber, as he brought up, used to beat uh, Gary's ass. So my thing is, I find it hard to believe a female, because Amber's tiny. She's not even that big. You know what I'm saying? She's a tiny girl and she would be beat Gary's big. So she'll be beating up on Gary. So I, I, it's weird for me to see Amber being beaten up by Matt. 
considering how fucking feisty she is and considering how violent she has been in the past. I also don't see Amber keeping quiet if someone beat her. I don't. And this is not me victim blaming. This is me using my common sense after watching Amber as on TV for 10 goddamn years and seeing how she is. Amber is a person who, right or wrong, she calls people out on their shit. You know what I'm saying? And right or wrong, she lives in her truth of the shit that she's doing. She's a little bit de in denial about how bad of a mother she is. But however, I don't see her protecting the guy who was beating her. I don't. I, I don't see it. Not for three fucking years. So, it was weird seeing her so angry. You're a piece of shit woman beating. Da, 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 da. You beat me, you know, then you, you put your hands on me. Then she said how you will abuse me and then abuse yourself and throw yourself down some stairs and say that you're going to call the cops and tell the cops I beat you to send me back to jail. And he says, oh, I beat you, but you're the one who went to jail for abuse. That pisses her off even more. You're a piece of shit. He, she cried. Oh, my God. I love you, but you need help. I don't think a person who's being beat by someone has the kind of... And again, I can say that because I have been in a, I have been in a abusive relationship. I was in one for about five years. No. Three. Three years. Um, so, I was, with, I was with him for five and three was abuse stuff. And so, I'm like, I, I can attest to that. Amber... I'm not saying that, that Matt has never, they have never had any kind of fight. I'm pretty sure he didn't push her or did something. But she made it seem as if he was just beating her ass. And I don't think that's what it was. I can more see it being a situation where they're arguing and one of them hit the other and it was a goddamn fight. I can completely see that. Um, but she just came out the blue with it. I'm looking like, wait, 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 what? It was just confusing. And, you know, Matt was like, you know, you're not an abuse victim. You know, you went to jail for abuse. You're the violent one. And I don't think he should have said that because that dude seems as if he's being passive aggressive and blaming her. If he put his hands on her, he's, he's, he's going to say, let me put the finger at you so that they'll say, well, he probably beat her up in retaliation for her beating him. Or just some, I feel like that's why he said that to make an excuse as to why he put his hands on her. And, you know, I don't feel like Matt is innocent in this at all. I don't. But I also don't feel like Amber is either. I thought they are a crazy couple who are dealing with shit. And now she's putting on for the cameras as if he's just this horrible woman beater. But if he is this horrible woman beater, why are you at marriage boot camp trying to fix it? How horrible is he? If he's a woman beating piece of shit, a woman beating piece of shit, why are you trying to work it out with him? One marriage boot camp. Why? He's a, you know, is you know, the shit is crap. I just, and I also wonder where, cause Andrew met her on this show. And when Andrew said on team, Mom, I will be trying to peek around the corners and learn more about her. So you seen her doing this shit. And this is what you fell in love with seeing her on this show. And now knowing that Andrew said he saw her on the show and fell in love with her. It means Andrew was batshit crazy too. And we ain't seen it yet. We have Andrew as nice as he is on the show. It's some about him we ain't seen yet. Because no one can see that kind of. No one can see that kind of behavior. And think it's attractive. And think you know what. I want the crazy red headed girl. I want her. I want the. I want that one right there. You can't. You can't logically think that. In that atmosphere. You can't. And if you do you're fucking crazy. Um. We then see a second um, group activity where they put them in like a tank and it had snakes in it. And if they don't admit one thing they said in the soundproof booth that I told y'all would come back to bite them in the ass, they're going to like let the snakes out or whatever. So, you know, the Graziano sisters basically discuss how Renee says how she doesn't like how they never discuss her drug addiction. But in her second breath, she said that she does not like discussing her drug addiction with her sisters because they can't. They don't know what she's talking about because they haven't been through it. So I'm like, what? so you do want to discuss with them or you don't? I was confused by her whole thing. You know, one sister says that she admits, like, I don't know a lot about drug addiction, so I don't like to talk about it. And I think people can think, well, that's something dumb to say. Drug addiction 
knowing about drug addiction is more about knowing someone is addicted to drugs. It's more than knowing, oh, if you're addicted to drugs, you'll get rehab. There's a lot to know about drug addiction, alcoholism, and, and addiction in general. So I like how the sister said, like, I don't really know about it enough to talk about it. And that's an honest, true thing that people don't even realize. You have to really know about it. To, and I don't mean know about it in the way you have to have been a drug addict. But you can read about it, you know, read up on it, Google it, search it, go to class to talk to doctors. You can do different things to get information on it so that you can better have conversations with addicts. So we see that whole thing. Um, Brandy says that she thinks, no, Brandy's daddy says, I don't like that she was once an escort. And when he said it, she was like, what? I was never an escort. And he was like, yeah, you told me one time that you were escorting someone somewhere and that you was an escort. I never said that. I have never said that. I'm not, a, I'm not an escort. Da, 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 da. I thought <laughs> it was hilarious because I feel like she probably said to her daddy something about escorting, but not in the aspects of prostitution. She probably was someone's date somewhere and she used the word escort. Now her daddy being old school knew what escort means you're a prostitute. And so for that reason, he don't like what you do. It was <laughs> it was hilarious to me. Um, Amber and Matt get in there and they had to discuss the fight from earlier, but Matt, like, I ain't talking about it. You know, I'm not letting her bait me into discussing abuse allegations when I'm telling y'all I didn't do it. And um She, Amber said, like, you know, him, you know, saying that I'm the violent one and bringing up me going to jail and because he's an asshole and he's an abuser. And she's saying all these things. And I do, I am a believer in you can't accuse someone of something and expect them not to defend themselves. And I also don't like when someone accuses someone of something and everyone, abu everyone believes the accuser as if accusers haven't lied. I think both an accuser and the accused should have to prove themselves one way or the other. Um, if you say he beat me and let's say he didn't beat you and you have no proof that he beat you, I should not be forced to take your word over his when I have no proof that either one of you are telling the truth. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think that's how people should do certain situations. If you can't, because my thing is one person's word over the next person's word doesn't mean anything because we know people lie. You know what I'm saying? So it's a thing of you should be innocent until proven guilty. Um, if someone says, he beat me, he punched me in the face, and we see an eye bruise. Well, yeah, you, you, you did. You did do something. Um, but if you say he hit me, well, how we don't hit you? Because I said so. I need more than that. Because if he said he didn't do it, what makes, excuse me, what makes your word better than his? So it was a weird thing between them two. Even though we know something happened, it just felt like Amber just out the blue made him to be this abuser. And I think it was a way that that could have been handled differently. Because it is weird because Amber herself is an abuser. She's a former abuser. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do we even grasp what is going on with the? They don't need to be. Well, first of all, they're not together. So honestly, you know what? I don't need to fuck no more. I'm over it. Um, Chrissy, Jim, and, and, and Mama Jones. They take the blindfolds off of them. Mama Jones and Jim is like, fuck this shit. Get us out of here. This is not fear factor. This is some bullshit. They got out so quick. They left Chrissy in there. <laughs> how you leave your fiance in the snake pit how how bruh how you do that so Chrissy goes sit down and you know Chrissy is kind of like you know I'm, I can't deal with this you know Jim is saying stuff like you know I don't because they say you know Jim you aren't you know really participating in things you're not really paying attention and he said you know y'all need to prove to me that y'all know what y'all doing you know this is some bullshit and you know show me that y'all know what y'all doing they say okay cool they didn't play Chrissy's recording and thing and she's saying how again i have to continue fight for my relationship i'm fighting this mama i'm fighting this i'm fighting that and da, da, da. i should have to fight that hard and he hear her crying then she's sitting there and she crying so it's even more she's emotional or whatever and then he said he's sorry my bad y'all got it y'all know what y'all doing you know what i'm saying i should not have uh reacted that way and then 
Chrissy feels like that she didn't even get to, she didn't get anything out of the exercise because again, Jim and his mom had a reaction that stopped them from doing anything further. So we do see them up, up in the room and he's trying to talk to her and she's kind of self like, I can't believe that, you know, I'm really here to do stuff and you ain't. And it seemed like he only talking and trying to be, and trying to participate when the cameras ain't around. Like, he ain't trying to, and I don't like that. He need to get it done, just let it be with a wee. You know, the ending of it is Amber and Matt. Matt is in his crib, literally. Amber yelling at him like he's a baby, literally. Get out. I'm like, first of all, that ain't your house or your room. You can't just put him out. Um, and he in his own baby crib. Mind his own baby business. And she is in his you need to get out because you're an abuser. You're a con and he said, you know, you're a con, or, con artist and a liar. They are no longer together. They are not made for each other. She is currently pregnant with another man's baby and the man that she met on the show. So for me, I think that could be a reason also why I'm not too invested in this season for some of the couples. Because I'm looking like we watching Matt and Amber when we know they broke up. We know the guy she would not, she met on the show. He was a goddamn gone behind a camera person or whatever, and she met him on the show. So I'm like, all the antics that they have, I mean, it's good entertainment, but I don't really care because I know the ending. They're not going to end up together. So all her antics to me just proves, one, they should not have been together, and two, I don't know how Andrew saw her and her antics and said, I want to be with her. You know what? I'm going to be with her, and I'm going to get her pregnant. So, I mean... I'm done. Yep, I'm going to end it right there because it's stupid. You know, Renee came in and said her piece, and I don't, you, if you're a beater, you know, stupid, and you're a piece of shit, and he's like, she's a liar. You, what if you found out that what she said wasn't true? So you're saying that she, you didn't put your hands on her? You didn't beat her? He said, I'm not saying that I, that I never put my hands on her. It was just stupid, and I'm over it. So guess what, people? I am Jay Lee. This is Chili's Corner. Put your comments below. Put your comments below to let me know if you also feel like this season isn't entertaining enough because you feel like it could be some bullshit. Put it down below and let me know what you think about it. We can talk about it in the comment section. So, yeah. Peace.